Hey everybody, welcome back to Chicago Reaction. <laughs> I'm Zach, one of your favorite actors in Chicago, joined by Michael. I'm also, hopefully, one of your favorite actors here in the city of Chicago. We're doing some more React videos for you today. We are checking out Fidel Castro's Dairy Adventures by Salmonella. <laughs> Our good old friend Sam. We've missed you, Sam. Is that Fidel uh, Castro lactose intolerant? Is that what yeah. we're about to find out? <laughs> Last, um, last time we hung out with Sam, we checked out the top 10 worst animal skeletons. Um, so uh, <laughs> we, had, we had a blast with that one. Yeah, so, so that we're gives me a lot of hope. Excited to jump back um, in. Something else may, may be slightly more nefarious than uh, lactose intolerance, but we're about to find out. Let's jump in. Hey kids, let's talk about Fidel Castro. We're all familiar with Castro, right? Dictator of Cuba for the whole second half of the 20th century, main antagonist of the Cuban Missile Crisis, you know. Anyway, this man loves three things. He loves Cuba, he loves communism, and good God does the man love dairy. Yep, you heard me right. The all-powerful dictator of communist Cuba is obsessed with anything related to milk and its derivatives. I drew up a little chart here, right? I called the leche love. I wish I had not. At the bottom, you got dairy farmers. Oh, then man. you got Ross I wish I bled milk. Then Mr. Bones. Then starving babies. And then all the way up at the top here, you got Fidel Castro. Today, I'm going to share a few true stories that illustrate his preoccupation. Okay, the first one isn't really a story so much as a fact, but according to several sources, Castro was known to be able to eat 18 scoops of ice cream after a meal. That's more than two pints. If that doesn't impress you, then oh go gosh. try it for yourself. Me, I can barely manage a pint and a half on an empty stomach. And Castro's doing it on top of a full meal. But it gets better. Being such an ice cream connoisseur, Castro ordered the construction of an ice cream shop. But this isn't your average everyday <laughs> ice cream. not by a long shot. He <laughs> built a straight up ice cream complex taking what? up an entire city block. This was a piece of modern architecture too, in total contrast to the surrounding slums, all for the sake of ice cream. The place is called Popelia and it's still open today. Of course, Castro's obsession went beyond really? just personal pleasure. Dairy was so dear to him that it often found its way into diplomatic interactions. Like one time, a French diplomat came to visit, so Castro whips out some Cuban cheese. Specifically though, it was camembert cheese, a variety that France is famous for. French guy was like, hey, not bad. It's almost as good as the French kind. Uh -huh. Try it again. I think you'll find it's even better than the French. All right, I won't say that. I'm sorry. Are you disrespecting my cheese in my house on my island? No, I mean, it's good. I just said the French kind is better. Maybe if you froggy fucks bathed once in a while, you'd be able to taste the cheese instead of your own B.O. Oh, Listen, man. you've got your cigars. We've got our cheese. Live with it. Fine. Fuck him, it's good cheese. I'm paraphrasing just a little bit, but that's basically how it works. I was waiting for so the So already it's head. obvious that dairy is of great value to Castro. Most Dude, exceptional, however, is how this value reflected in his leadership. Naturally, having an entire nation at his disposal, Castro wanted to bolster the Cuban dairy industry as much as possible. But there was one problem. Cuba initially had two types of cows called La Reinas and Zebus. La Reinas came from the days when Spain ruled Cuba, and Zebus originated from India. Both of these cows are well suited to the Cuban environment, having a very high tolerance for heat. However, they don't produce much milk, they're mostly just raised for their meat. So Castro decides to import thousands of Holsteins from Canada. Holsteins are the classic black and white cows, and as we all know, you can juice these guys for days. They are utterly superior. Only problem is, they're used to living in Canada, so when they're plopped down under the scorching Caribbean sun, it's going to stress them out. They're not yeah. going to be laughing cows by any means. So as a result, Castro's imports still didn't put out enough milk to satisfy his desires. At this point, your average run-of-the-mill dairy queen would have given up. But Castro, he's more than that. He's a dairy dictator. So we <laughs> the construction of a giant air-conditioned complex with the sole purpose of providing a comfortable environment for his Holsteins. And it helped a little bit, but they were still stressed right. out. They still weren't putting out at their natural levels. And as you can imagine, climate controlling an entire facility is very expensive. So yeah, Castro was forced insane. to abandon the project. 
But like the astronaut he is, Castro held on to his dream of finding the Milky Way. So he gathered a team of scientists and farmers and ordered them to breed together the Zebus and the Holsteins in order to produce a heat resistant <laughs> lactose pumping super cow. The breeding efforts I mean, were mostly that's a actually bust, kind of never smart. producing the bovine like, master yeah. race that Castro longed for. Creating However, an industry was yeah. this country. Under Castro's program, a single individual was born that met his expectations with flying colors. The cow was named Ubre Blanca, Spanish for white udder, and she produced world record breaking volumes of milk, peaking oh at 110 God. liters a day. That's more than 29 oh. entire gallons of lactation. Needless to say, Castro was absolutely euphoric at this isolated success of his. To say he went ballistic would be an understatement. He went intercontinentally ballistic. Like, India hasn't got shit on the levels of cow worship that Castro performed. Daily updates were published in the Cuban <laughs> National <laughs> Blanca's health and productivity. And when she died in 1985, Castro commissioned a giant marble statue. This bitch still juicy. He literally made the <laughs> national newspaper give you updates about the heifer like, that he raised. What a what a that boss is hysterical. Boss. Who's the juicy one? Who's Who's the Castro juicy one? or the cow? I think it's both. <laughs> I think it's still <laughs> juicy. Still juicy. He also oh, had scientists harvest tissue and egg samples for the sake of preserving her DNA. After Ubre Blanca's death, Castro's plans for the Cuban dairy industry got even more desperate and ridiculous somehow. This is based off of an actual conversation that he had with his team of scientists in 1987. Okay, guys, hear me out. What if we make cows that are the size of dogs, so that way they can live in people's apartments with them. Uh, Fidel, I, I don't think that's gonna work. No, 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 what? it'll work. You just have to grow grass in the apartment, too. You can't be serious. Yeah, you just gotta put up some fluorescent lights. Bam, little, uh, little, uh, little grazing patch for your doggy cow. You are a fucking lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> and Cuba's dairy industry yes. is still floundering today, sadly. Mm. So yeah, if you haven't gotten the picture by now, the dude likes milk. Imagine he's at the birth Maybe of his Maybe a little disconnected right? from oh, the uh, a everyday person. Uh, Fidel, there's something we need to tell you. Your grandson, he's lactose intolerant. Prepare the firing squad. Anyway, there's plenty of other miscellaneous stories surrounding his little there was preoccupation, lactose like the coming. time the CIA tried to poison his milkshake. So I just decided to highlight a few big ones. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. Wow, what a crazy, fun little story. I mean, that was pretty short, but like... Um... That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's so yeah. wild. I, I I love the the you know we've talked to, we've talked to a lot about passion today in the studio. Yeah, and very passionate people. Yeah, and uh, he's just passionate about his dairy. You know it. I, I I I truly and genuinely hope for everybody out there watching our videos and enjoying our content that you are half as passionate about something in life as Mr. Castro is about about dairy and cows. Um, because man, it, that can make life pretty rewarding. Yeah. Wow. What. I'm still <laughs> a little hung up on the fact that he <laughs> wanted to raise itty bitty cows, <laughs> itty bitty cows to put in your apartment. But then, oh, are you gonna have to milk them? Is everyone gonna like okay, milk? Everyone's gotta milk their own cow. Milk the milk their dog cow and send it to Fidel Castro so he can enjoy his 18 scoops of ice cream. Okay, yeah. Also impressive, man. My my digestive system would just not be having that. Yeah. Um, 18 scoops. No, no, but no. that was fun, man. Sam and I was always good at diving into like these fun, weird things mm -hmm. that you would never otherwise know. Like I would never know otherwise. That information. Otherwise, no, I would never yeah. otherwise know that. <laughs> um, so thank you, Sam and Ella, for giving us a weird dive mm -hmm. into the life of Fidel Castro. Mm -hmm. um, Feel free too to check out uh, all, all of our other reactions to Sam and Ella videos. Um, we have yes. a, a, on, on the Chicago Reacts roster, we have several people that have reacted to different Sam and Ella content. Um, so thank you to our producer for allowing us to also react to some because yeah. uh, that, that was such a treat. Yeah, um, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And hey, leave a comment in the comment section down below. What is your favorite flavor favorite of ice, of ice cream? cream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is yours, Michael? Um, I would have to go with... 
Oh, of course. I mean, I mean, I'm a Ben and Jerry's fan myself. Okay. I'm trying to think. Like a Cherry Garcia is Cherry good. Garcia. If yeah, I like a... It's, I, it's a good one. I do like a fruit-flavored ice cream, I'm going to be honest with you. But yeah. Chocolate and peanut is also good. Yeah. I'm a sucker for the simple flavors. I do dairy-free, personally. So. Right. It's yeah. good. <laughs> I'm going to get set up in the firing squad. <laughs> Oh, uh, right. With right. Uh, Fidel Castro's nephew or niece. I think it was that. Was it? Or his grandchild. Gr- well, whoever was it was. I don't Nesta. know. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> they're, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. Just like me. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Chicago, Chicago Reacts. Reacts.